Before we really get into back button focus, we need to think about focus modes. That's because we use it within those modes. So the main modes that we have on most Canon cameras and most other manufacturers' cameras out there are single shot mode or one shot in Canon speak. I think that's AFS in Nikon. Uh, we've got something called AI Servo in Canon. That's a continuous focus mode, AFC in Nikon. Then we've got a third mode in Canon cameras. It's called AI Focus, and this is an intelligent mode that's designed to work out if your subject is stationary or moving. It's kind of meant to be the best of both worlds, but in practice, I don't really like to use it, and that's because it's not predictive. If we've got a bird that's about to fly, how does the camera know that? It's in one shot while the bird is stationary on the branch, but it doesn't know it's about to fly. And then suddenly this bird bursts into movement. You might miss those one or two crucial frames while the camera tries to figure out what mode it needs to be in. I don't want to risk it. I'd prefer to use my camera in a different way. And that's where back button focus comes in, right at that point. But let's not forget the fourth focus mode, manual focus. Now manual focus is something that I use a lot in my wildlife photography and it's really useful for it when any animal disappears into a thicket and there's obstructing twigs or branches in front of it. Because what happens in any of the autofocus modes is it tends to hunt back and forth, particularly in continuous or servo mode. It doesn't do it so much in one shot, but then I have to be really careful not to have to take my finger off the half press on the shutter because otherwise the camera is going to focus again and again and again. And I don't want that to happen for three or four hours at a particular sighting. That is going to get really boring really quickly. So manual focus is actually a really important part of this. But so is speed and time and time not faffing around with menus or slider switches or any of this stuff. It's all designed to be fast, but it's not fast enough. And that's why so many wildlife photographers and bird photographers like to use back button focus because it helps us achieve all of these things in one focus mode, AI servo or AFC continuous mode. Now there's nothing wrong with one shot focusing and focusing off the shutter button, nothing at all. There's just a few problems with it from a wildlife perspective. So what are the advantages of focusing off the shutter button in one shot mode? Well, I tend to find that it's more accurate at least, because once it acquires focus, it sticks with it. With AFC or continuous focus, what you find is that the camera tends to hunt very slightly back and forth, back and forth, as it continually tests focus. And sometimes that can yield soft shots for stationary subjects. So one shot or uh, locked focus is better for stationary subjects. And then it's also really easy to understand. You can pass your camera to any stranger in the street and they can take a picture of you while you're on holiday using the shutter button. That's a typical advantage of keeping the focus mechanism or the focusing function on this shutter button. So what about disadvantages? Well, one I can think of is where you've got to lock focus and keep it there for long periods of time. So that could typically be a landscape photo where you might take a bracketed set of shots. It's definitely true of Milky Way photography where you might need to focus on the star and just leave it there for the entire night. You definitely don't want to be pressing this by accident for metering, for instance, and then find that you've refocused and you have to dial in that focus in the dark. Again, that can be really bad. So it's really, really crucial with one-shot modes that you don't have a long period of time over which you're photographing because the chances are whenever you press this again or your camera goes to sleep, your camera is going to refocus and mess that setup of your shot, mess the shot up. And that I don't like at all. With back button focus, that doesn't happen. So why might we choose continuous focus or servo modes instead of one shot modes? Well, for any kind of moving subject, we have to choose a servo mode because how else do we track that subject? We need to follow it, so we choose an AI servo mode. The difficulty with that mode now is the opposite 
of one shot. Whereas with one shot, we didn't want to restart focus by accident by pressing the shutter button. The difficulty with continuous mode or servo mode is now we have no way to stop focusing unless we lift our finger off the button. So we're in a quandary. We've got a situation where each is as bad as the other, but from a different perspective. And this is where back button focus comes in to save the day again, because it gives us a way of stopping focusing in continuous mode photography. We use back button focus in order to stop focusing in continuous mode. And that's important because quite often we do need to take a break from that. Whenever we need to manually focus through the twigs and the thickets, we need to stop focusing off the shutter button. Otherwise it's going to screw it up. If we need to focus and recompose in continuous mode, we need to be able to stop focusing at least for the period of that photograph. Otherwise it's going to screw it up. So that is the beauty of disassociating focus from this front button and putting it on any other button. It doesn't matter where it is, it just happens to be an easier place for a lot of people to have it on the back of the camera here under the thumb. Once we do that, once we've disassociated focus, we've taken it off the shutter button here and we have put it on our other button here, we've got the best of all four of our focus modes. We can engage in one-shot photography. All I have to do is point my camera at the subject, focus on it by pressing the back button here, take my finger off, and I'm now in a situation where my focus is locked. I can focus and recompose to my heart's content, I can take as long as I like to take that picture, I can do a long exposure, I can do whatever I want without any risks of refocusing by pressing this button here. If I'm in continuous or servo mode, I've also got the advantage of one-shot mode because I can be tracking and tracking and tracking a subject and then the sub subject stops, the lion lays down and sits there waiting for me and now I don't need to be continuously focusing again. Perhaps I want to take a recomposed shot. I just lift my finger off the back here and I can stop focusing, recompose my shot and take my picture. That is awesome. But now my lion has got up and it's disappeared into a thicket and there's twigs in front of its face. Well, if I press the back button in, it's going to mess up my focus again. But I don't want to change to a manual mode because maybe the thing will spring out and try and hunt something. I need to be ready. But what can I do? I can just take my finger off, my thumb off the back button and start to focus on that line manually and leave it in there dialed in for as long as that sighting takes. It might be three hours. As long as I want, I can track that line with manual focus and take my shots as necessary. It's fantastic. It's given me all of those abilities and all of that speed. I don't have to faff around on the back of my camera changing modes. I don't have to slide any switches. All I need to do is coordinate a little bit with my thumb on the back here. That is back button focus in a nutshell. So what are the disadvantages of back button focus? Well, I can certainly think of a couple, and maybe you can think of a few as well and put them in the comments below. The ones that resonate for me are for when you're first starting out. It can be really hard to remember to not use this button anymore and to start using this one. As I said earlier, it can be really hard if you hand your camera over to someone and let them try and take a picture. They won't be able to get one of you. They won't be able to figure it out. And then perhaps the most important one from my perspective is pain in my hand at long sightings. And that might sound ridiculous, but if you're doing it for day on end, uh, hours and hours and hours at a time, and you're death gripping this camera, pushing in that button for all your life is worth in order to focus, that can really hurt your hand and cause strain injuries. And I have a strain injury from doing that. So after an hour or two of doing it, my hand starts to throb and I can't do it anymore. And that brings me on to an alternative. It's called the AF stop method and it works exactly the same way as back button focus, but from a diametrically opposed point of view. If you remember the crux of this whole problem, 
in continuous or servo mode is how do we stop focusing for those occasional times when we need to? Well, there's an answer to that. Instead of putting focus on the back button, we put focus stop on the back button. And that deals with that problem. Simple as that. Now I can sit at a sighting for 99% of the time, focusing with my front, front finger, my index finger on the shutter button, as I normally would whenever I want, and it's released all the pain in my hand. And every, every now and then when I want to stop focusing on that subject, because it's stationary or want to recompose, all I need to do is hold in this button and my focus will stop. I can recompose the shot and take it. The big disadvantage with AF stop as a focusing method are for those occasions where you actually don't want to focus for long periods of time. So landscapes, night skies, star photography, where you want the focus just to be locked for a long period of time, then probably back button focus is the right method to use there because if you're not pressing the button in, you're not focusing. Conversely for wildlife shooters and bird photographers where you are focusing on your subject, your moving subject, for 90% of the time, then I think the AF stop method makes a lot more sense than back button. And the reason for that is because 90% of the time you're focusing on your subject and perhaps 10% of the time you're not. And therefore you only have to hold that back button in for 10% of the time. Makes a lot of sense to me that. And I actually got this tip from a wildlife photographer called Grant Atkinson who doesn't use back button focus. It certainly helped my hand a lot. Let's talk dual back button focus and this is an exciting topic for any kind of gadget nerd. Now you may have noticed that on most modern cameras there's a number of back buttons and this particular one has three and I'm sure your camera has at least two. Now quite often on the more modern bodies like this Canon 7D Mark II you can actually program these buttons individually. And the exciting thing about that is I can do some crazy things. One of the crazy things that I might do is choose a different mode for each button. So I could have single shot to one shot mode focus on this button and back button focus, continuous button focus on the other button. That's an exciting proposition, isn't it? Maybe that's the best of both worlds. Alternatively, I could put a single point on this button and focus very accurately in the center of the camera and a wide area of focus points across the frame on this button. Think about that, how that might work with bird and flight photography. I could pick the camera up, use the multi-area point selection to quickly acquire the bird in the sky, and then as my focus settles on that bird and I dial in, I can shift my thumb over just to the left slightly to a single point and track that bird really nicely with it. That's a really nice and interesting way to shoot, I think. I'd really like to get your point of view on this because there's so much controversy and debate around these rather simple ideas. What's your way of focusing? What would you recommend other people do? And what do you think is best for your photography? Let me know down below. Are you considering back button focus? Is that how you came to this video? Are you convinced of it? Let me know. Are you considering maybe the AF stop method? Have you even heard of the AF stop method? I'd really like to hear if you have, whether it's actually that widespread out there. And then what about dual back button focus? Is that something you might consider using? Do you think it's useful or is it just confusing? Are you going to stick with what you know? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you who shoot Canon cameras, I'm going to head into the menu now and show you how to set it up back button focus that is and for those of you who don't I apologize I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on your cameras you're going to have to just google your camera or YouTube your camera and find out exactly how to set it up I'll see you next time so the first thing I'm going to do is just tap the menu button here and come into my menu and then I'm going to scroll over to custom functions which is all the way over here under this little camera icon. And here down the button, bottom we've got custom controls and you can see mine is ticked. If I go into custom controls it gives us a whole bunch of options in what to set here. And you can see my shutter button has metering and autofocus 
applied to it. So in order to set up back button focus, I want to set my focus button as AF on, which is this button at the top right here. So I'm going to just use the thumb control to move down to AF on, and I'm going to scroll over to where it says metering and AF, and I click set. And now you can see both these buttons are going to meter and autofocus. But I've got one more step to do. I need to go up to my shutter button and take off the autofocus. So I'm going to move over just to metering start and click that. Now you can see the shutter, shutter button, all it does is apply metering and take the shot. And my back button here, the AFM button, is actually going to apply the focusing. So that's traditional back button focus. Now, if you want to do this the alternate way that I described, put your shutter button back to AF on, or AF, autofocus, and metering. That's the traditional way of setting it up. Come down to your AF on button, press the set button, and then just turn this to AF off you want to use. So this is going to stop focus. So now you can see the configuration is the opposite. You've got AF and metering still on the shutter button, and you've got AF on set to AF off. So that will stop focus. So that's the second method that I described. Now if you're interested in uh, finding out how I set my cameras up, or you've got any ideas on this, then please leave me a comment down below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on this subject and whether you think back button focus is actually something that will work for you, whether you use it now, whether you like the idea of dual back button focus, or whether you like the idea of uh, AF stop focus. Let me know.